What does it mean to be a heart-centered leader? Someone who can not only accomplish great things, but also allow people to feel truly seen and respected in their presence. What would it be like if you were able to influence people, whether you are in business and you're influencing clients and customers or a team, or you're a parent influencing your kids? What would it be like to be able to influence people from a place that is truly ethical as well as effective? Welcome to the Zen Stoic Path, where we share a modern take on timeless wisdom to help you create unshakable inner peace. I'm your host, Victor Pierantoni. Let's get into the show. In this episode, we're going to be talking about something called intentional influence. Now, it's important to understand that when it comes to this idea of influence or leadership, that we're doing so from a heart-centered place, which essentially means that we're doing so with a sense of reverence and respect for the human being on the other end. It is important to understand that whenever we are in a position of leadership or influence, that we are always putting the human being first. Zen Stoic philosophy is all about prioritizing the humanity in each and every one of us, in championing the individual. So whenever we think about this idea of influence, we want to come to it from a place of respect and reverence for the human being. It is as Marcus Aurelius said, as human beings, we are made for each other. We are made to cooperate. We are a social animal that we thrive, not because we're the biggest or strongest, but we thrive because we're able to come together, because we're able to see each other. We're able to encourage each other's unique gifts and abilities and come together in a common goal to create progress in our society. So when it comes to this idea of influence and leadership, we want to be able to come from that place because at the end of the day, all of this philosophy, all of Zen, all of Stoicism is all about being perfectly and simply human. The wisdom of Zen is in the simplicity of being human. And this whole idea of when you're tired, sleep, when you're hungry, eat, when you're thirsty, drink. And it is that simple. And so when we bring this into the conversation of how we interact with each other, what our interpersonal relationships are like with one another, it is just as important to keep things simple. And so in this episode, when it comes to this idea of intentional influence, we are going to be discussing the number one way to create influence in others that is coming from a truly ethical as well as an effective place of being a heart-centered leader. And being a heart-centered leader is all about what is known as emotional currency. Now, emotional currency is how we are able to build such a deep bond and connection with people that they are comfortable and they are trusting of whatever it is that we are leading them to. So it also takes alignment on your end as well when you are creating emotional currency. Now, my favorite thing about emotional currency is that it cannot be faked because this is something that is felt between two human beings. When there is a rapport that is created, there is an actual feeling, a kinesthetic feeling. In other words, an emotional sensation that you get when you are creating a sense of emotional currency. If you think about anyone that you know in your life that you have a deep bond with, somebody who truly gets you, not just somebody that you have fun with in conversation or that you have chemistry, but somebody who truly gets and understands you, there is a certain feeling of safety and trust that you have with them. And that is one aspect of emotional currency. And this feeling cannot be faked. We know when it's there. We can feel it intuitively. And so to understand the definition of emotional currency, it is important that we understand the five different parts of emotional currency. Emotional currency is the degree to which you feel safe, seen, heard, understood, and respected. Now, when you create this sensation, when you create this feeling, it is like putting money in the bank on an emotional level between two people. Now, emotional currency is key because when you create emotional currency, it is something that is unique to you and the person that you're in relationship with. So this can function in all types of relationships. This can function in professional relationships as well as personal relationships. So if you are in the sales industry and Part of your work is to build relationships with people and influence them to buy your product or service. Emotional currency is key and will help you to actually generate more sales as well as deeper relationships that may result in referrals or a bigger lifetime value of each client that you serve. If you are a business owner and you have a team to lead, emotional currency will allow you to not just connect with your team, but actually inspire the best in them. And if you are a parent, emotional currency will allow you to truly connect and understand your kids so that they feel 
safe with you, safe to share with you what's on their heart, and it allows them to listen to you easier because they know and they can feel that you have their best interest at heart, not just because you tell them that you do, but because they can actually feel it. This is the result of emotional currency. When it comes to romantic relationships, it is also key because when you run into challenges, if you don't have emotional currency in romantic relationships, it can lead to a lot of fighting, disruptions, misunderstandings. But when you do have a lot of emotional currency in your romantic relationship, it can lead to some beautiful experiences, moments, and bonds that the two of you share. So across the board, personally and professionally, this is one of the most important lessons that I've ever learned. And it is one of the most human things. So this is a very foundational and fundamental way of looking at relationships from a Zen stoic lens. It is to prioritize the human being to bring in the humanity into each and every one of your connections. So let's talk Talk about how this actually functions. Remember, we broke emotional currency into these five parts. Feeling safe, feeling seen, feeling heard, feeling understood, and feeling respected. So I'm going to go through each one of them and how they actually function in an everyday interaction. So there are five pillars to emotional currency. The first pillar of emotional currency is safety. Now, the most important question that anyone is ever asking themselves is, am I safe? It is the most fundamental question that we have as human beings is thinking to ourselves, am I safe? Now, in our modern times, safety can mean a variety of different things. It is not simply our physiological safety, like it may have been in hunter-gatherer times, where you're just wondering if you're going to be safe from the elements, safe from wild animals, safe from bad weather, having shelter. In our modern world, there are all kinds of different contexts in which we can feel safe or unsafe. Safety can be financial safety. It can be emotional safety, psychological safety, mental safety. Every one of these contexts and areas of life can dictate whether or not we feel safe. So when you're creating emotional currency with a person, the best way to create safety in relationships of all kinds, whether personal or professional, is to set and fulfill expectations. It might sound incredibly simple, but when you set and fulfill expectations, in other words, when you do what you say you're going to do and you don't make empty promises, but you actually fulfill and make good on the things that you promise to other people, it creates a feeling of trust and safety. There is consistency in your behavior. So when we are talking with other people, again, when you are doing this in business, setting and fulfilling expectations with your customers and clients or with the employees that you have is really key to let them know that if you say something, they can trust you. And the same thing happens in our personal relationships. That's how we build that sense of connection. That's how we build that deep trust. It sounds really simple, but it is the fundamental building block of emotional currency. You can do everything else right, but if you are completely inconsistent with your words and actions, then people are not going to be able to feel that sense of trust with you. Now, oftentimes, the thing that breaks our emotional currency is the attempt to be all things to all people and to make big, grandiose, or empty promises. Saying yes to somebody when you feel no inside, this can disrupt the safety that you have with another human being. So when it comes to creating safety, there are a variety of ways of us to do that. And one in which, or the most fundamental, is setting and fulfilling expectations, essentially doing what you say you're going to do. And there are other ways of also allowing somebody to feel safe. One in which is active listening and being present when you're having conversation with somebody. When you're totally present and you're able to focus in completely on the person in front of you, you will create a sense of safety between you and them because in that moment, you're allowing them to feel like the only person in the world where essentially all the attention and focus is on them and you're holding that container of a conversation in a way that is non-judgmental and more so coming from a place of respect and appreciation. When you do that, you allow somebody to feel safe to express whatever it is that they want to express to you. Now, there are other ways of creating safety that essentially overlap with some of the other areas of emotional currency. So let's get into the next one. Now, the second pillar of emotional currency is feeling seen. When you allow somebody to feel seen, what this does is it allows their individual experience of themselves to be reflected back to them from someone else. So why is this important? Because we don't know who we are in a vacuum. We know who we are in relationship with other people. So in relationship to other people, we start to find out who we are based on the roles that we play in each other's lives and the way that we interact and the way that we solve problems together, the way that we come to solutions together. We know ourselves through other people because other people reflect back to us essentially the behavior or the actions that we are expressing in any one given moment. So when it comes to feeling seen, 
This is a really important piece of emotional currency. Now, where I learned this pillar of emotional currency was actually when I was in my first job coaching, when I was coaching for a very large company and I had a ton of clients. So with this company, when I began, because I was one of the younger coaches and less experienced coaches, I didn't get a whole lot of clients and they would actually send me what were known as the problem clients. Now, the problem clients were essentially clients that were transferring from one coach to the next, either because that client wasn't accountable to their goals or they didn't like their coach or they were difficult to work with, whatever amount of negative labels you could put on somebody. So this company had a coaching sales team. The coaching sales team would sell the coaching and then they'd assign the clients to the coaches. So I remember getting this one client and I was her fourth coach in two months. And so she, we get on the fir- our first phone call together and in the notes, some of the coaching sales reps had left notes about her being difficult to work with, about her being a pain to work with or that she was annoying to work with. I mean, any number of things that were essentially not empowering. And from a coaching perspective, it's very key that we have a very clear filter for how we look at our clients. And so in this way, I looked at these notes that were there that were ultimately negative and I chose to disengage with them. I chose not to not to look at them or not to take them in and instead treat this person with a very fresh perspective. So her and I get on the phone together and she's telling me about why she's doing coaching and what inspired this whole thing for her. And then she said this to me. She said, you probably think I'm annoying because you're my fourth coach in two months. And then I just paused for a second and I said, I don't think you're annoying at all. I think what's happening is that this investment in coaching is really important to you and that you want to find the right coach that you feel safe with to confide in, to share your goals and dreams, and somebody who's going to hold you accountable while also respecting who you are. And in that moment, everything changed. In that moment, she was able to actually feel safe in the interaction because she felt seen. Now, here's why she felt seen in that interaction when I started to reflect back upon it. When I started to reflect back upon this interaction, She was able to feel seen because I was seeing something that she wasn't saying. In other words, when you can read between the lines of not just what somebody's saying or doing, but you can see beyond that of maybe why they're saying and doing whatever it is that they're doing, that allows you to go deeper with somebody to see something in them that they may not even realize themselves. But when you articulate it, you put words to it, you give them that opportunity to actually feel seen in what they're truly trying to do. So one of the best ways to do this and to help people feel seen is when somebody's expressing behavior that's maybe not super desirable or maybe it's not your favorite thing that they do. You can always ask yourself, what is the positive intent of this? Because if you can think to yourself what the positive intent is and remove yourself and not take personally whatever it is that they're saying or doing, it allows you to actually see them for who they are and what they're trying to do. Everyone is doing the best they can with the resources that they have available. And sometimes their best doesn't actually appear like a positive behavior, but I can assure you there's always a positive intent behind what it is. Maybe they're trying to protect themselves. Maybe they're trying to be heard. Maybe they're trying to feel seen in some way, or maybe they're trying to express the importance of something for them. But if you can see beyond that, it allows you to actually build more emotional currency by giving somebody the opportunity to see who they really are and what they're actually trying to do. And so this was the way that I learned this. And when you can really see somebody, when somebody feels seen by you, they feel appreciated, they feel recognized, and they can not only feel that sense of recognition, but they can recognize themselves even more, which will cause their best to begin to come out more easily and effortlessly. Now, the third pillar of emotional currency is feeling heard. Now, feeling heard is something that is really important for somebody when they are expressing their voice, when they're expressing their ideas or what's alive within them. And one of the ways that you can allow somebody to feel heard in your presence is simply by being present, by engaging in that active listening. So we talked about this a little bit when it came to safety, but when you are giving somebody the opportunity to truly just speak their truth and you're able to sit there and listen to them and take in what it is that they have to say without interrupting them without planning your next response, but truly sitting and listening to what they have to say, the fact that they get to voice whatever it is that they're trying to express gives them that ability to feel heard. And most people don't get the opportunity to feel heard because most conversations, both parties 
are just essentially waiting to say what they want to say while the other person's talking instead of actually listening. So allowing somebody to feel heard is as simple as sitting and being present with them. Now, if you want one little simple trick that will allow you to drop into that state of just truly listening to somebody while somebody is talking, if you try to follow every one of their words consciously, it's going to be actually difficult to fully hear everything that they're saying. So what I actually do sometimes is that if somebody's talking really fast or they're giving me a lot of information, I don't focus on any one word that they're saying. I actually focus on my own breathing and I breathe. I do what is called belly breathing, which is essentially breathing all the way down into your stomach and filling your entire diaphragm and then just simply letting the breath go when you can't bring any more air in. While this sounds very counterintuitive, simply focusing on your own breath, almost like a meditation, allows you to truly hear somebody and be present with them because you're not thinking about what you're going to say. You're not thinking about essentially what the best response would be. You're not thinking about something of your own. You're simply sitting there in the present. So it's very much like a meditation. Just doing that, just actively listening is going to give you the opportunity for them to feel heard. Now, also, one way that you can help them feel heard is through something that Chris Voss, the author of Never Split the Difference, talks about in negotiations, which is to do what is known as a verbal mirror. Now, if you can do a verbal mirror while somebody's talking, it'll actually allow them to feel heard and knowing that they're, they're essentially all their information that's being expressed is being received by you. So a verbal mirror works kind of like this. If I were in a conversation and I said, I enjoy martial arts. What I can do to mirror somebody is to essentially repeat back the last one to three words or the key one to three words that they have said in the form of a question. So to something like, I enjoy martial arts or I really like martial arts, I might mirror and say martial arts as a question. When you mirror somebody versus saying, what did you mean by that? The mirror actually says, I heard everything that you said. Can you say it differently or elaborate so that I can have a deeper understanding. So not only does it allow somebody to feel heard, it encourages them to continue expressing and sharing with you, which creates more safety. And when they continue expressing and sharing with you, that leads us to our fourth pillar of emotional currency, which is to feel understood. Now to feel understood is very, very similar to feeling heard. The difference is that when somebody has shared everything with you, one of the ways that you can help somebody to feel understood is by essentially paraphrasing or summarizing what they've said back to them. Now you can do this in a variety of ways. You can say, you know, it seems like this is really important to you. It seems like you're really doing your best here. It's very similar to when you're allowing somebody to feel seen because you're recognizing you're essentially reading between the lines. When you help somebody to feel understood, what you're doing is you're helping to articulate the emotions and the feelings that they feel you'll know that you really allowed somebody to feel understood because they'll say something like, yes, exactly. Or they'll say something like, that's right. They won't say you're right. If they say you're right, just like Chris Voss would talk about to reference him one more time, what's actually happening is that you're maybe speaking in a way that is convincing or persuading them of something. So if somebody says you're right, what they mean is stop talking. So instead, if you get a that's right or a yes, exactly, some kind of affirmation to what you've reflected back to them, that can allow somebody to really and truly feel understood. And when people feel understood by you, they have a deeper sense of trust with you. They have a deeper sense of emotional currency with you. And the fifth pillar of emotional currency is to feel respected and or admired. Now, feeling respected and admired really important for building that sense of emotional currency. If somebody feels respected by you, they feel more empowered, they feel more confident, and when they feel positive around you, they actually become more intelligent. Research shows that people in a positive frame of mind actually experience a 31% increase in their overall intelligence in that moment while they're in that state of being. So when you allow some when you give somebody the opportunity to feel respected or admired, by you by giving a genuine compliment or by essentially recognizing them for something, that sense of feeling respected allows them to feel better in your presence. When they feel better in your presence, they have a positive association to communicating and interacting with you. And so when you create that sense of respect, you can do so through a genuine compliment. And again, when you give a genuine compliment, you want to compliment something that maybe they normally don't get complimented for, something that is within their control versus something that's outside of their control. So complimenting somebody on their looks, for example, can feel good for that person, 
but it's not going to feel as good to them as something that they actually put presence and energy into. So for instance, if you compliment somebody on their looks, that's not something that's fully within their control, but maybe their outfit on the other hand is. And if you say something like the way that you put the outfit together and the colors that you chose is just incredible. If you give a compliment like that, as opposed to something that's based on something that they can't control, that's going to allow somebody to feel a sense of admiration. And when you start to create admiration between people, you start to create a reverberation effect. One of my dear friends, Stuart Savatsky, who is a Kundalini yoga master, as well as was a family therapist for over 40 years, has helped mend countless relationships with people, does what is called admiration therapy. And admiration therapy is a very powerful way of creating emotional currency because essentially is around admiring the person in front of you as a way of creating a deeper bond. But doing so from a place of genuine admiration, not just flattery, but genuine admiration, right? Acknowledging people for the courage that they have to make certain decisions or, or really recognizing somebody. In other words, really bringing in all the themes that we've been talking about through this entire episode. And what's really interesting about that admiration piece is that when people are essentially admiring one another, it creates this positive reverberation effect. So for example, you'll have a couple who one compliments the other and the other one says, when you say this, it feels, it feels so good when you say this, or I feel so loved when you say this and it creates this positive reverberation. And so that admiration piece is really key because when somebody feels admired in your presence, they feel better, they're able to operate better. So when you put all five of these things together, you allow somebody to feel safe, you allow them to feel seen, to feel heard, to feel understood, to feel respected and admired in your presence, the trust that you have builds up this bank of emotional currency so that if it's a romantic partner, they know and they can trust you and they trust you implicitly so that even if you have a hiccup along the way in your relationship, it's, it's no problem. It's, it's very minuscule compared to the bank of emotional currency that you've created. If on the other hand, you are a business owner and you're leading a team, when you prioritize emotional currency with your team, they will go to the end of the earth for you because they feel all of those things in your presence. They will essentially follow your lead without question. And if you ever experience resistance in a client or in an employee, you can always link it back to a lack of emotional currency. When in doubt, come back to the emotional currency because this is the most human thing. This is what we need as human beings in our interactions. And if you're working with a client, for instance, or you're doing a sale of some sort and there is resistance or there are objections, so to speak, you could always point it back to a lack of emotional currency. And not enough trust has been built up. So when you can put all these things together, you create truly profound relationships that honor the human being in a way that nothing else does. People in business can always try and give a better deal or have a better product or better technology. But one thing that cannot be replicated is emotional currency. And when you do this, you give yourself the opportunity to create these deep bonds with the people around you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. One of the best ways to practice Zen Stoic philosophy is through conversations and interactions. And if we are going to create emotional currency with one another, it is important that we have a place to meet. So I wanted to announce on today's episode the Zen Stoic Dojo. The Zen Stoic Dojo is a free group on the school platform that gives all the listeners of the Zen Stoic Path the opportunity to connect, discuss, ask questions, and share their biggest insights and takeaways all in a place where everybody can gather together. In the Zen Stoic Dojo, we are going to prioritize emotional currency. This will be a place where you can interact with other people who are also on this path of creating unshakable inner peace and able to experience that emotional currency with one another. So go ahead and click the link in the show notes, and I look forward to seeing you in our school community, the Zen Stoic Dojo.